Dr. Larry here. We're teaching on the Holy Spirit, and we're now in part three, BI 314 course number, a look at the office and ministry of the Holy Spirit as manifested in the four Gospels, its power and authority in the Trinity, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the believer. As you enter into this study of the Holy Spirit in the Gospels, several things will be necessary to have in mind. Among them will be the words associated with holiness, such as holy, perfect, sanctification, justification, sealed, new man, old man, and other such words as fire. Further, keep in mind that at his baptism, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and his ministry afterwards was conducted in that power. In all, you will have 33 questions to answer. Number one, walking blameless. Zacharias and his wife, Luke 1, 6, were righteous, walking blameless in obedience to all the law. BI 499 is the study of the law, which I did, and that covers a lot of territory. So, question one is, what did the righteousness of Zacharias yield in his life? Luke 1, verses 15, 16, 17 is about John the Baptist. Luke 1, 27, 28, the Virgin Mary is blessed and highly honored. And some have overdone that and made her the queen of heaven, the mother of God, and exalted her above Jesus Christ and above God the Father Almighty in Mariolatry, which is idolatry, because wherever they marry is be. Held in high esteem, they always have an image of a woman. Luke one thirty five, the Holy Ghost on Mary for conception of the Son of God. What can the Holy Ghost do for you? Matthew one eighteen nineteen twenty and twenty one. Conceived by the Holy Ghost to save us from our sins. Has Jesus saved you from your sins? Or are you still committing your sins? Luke 1, 41. Mary visits Elizabeth and she is filled with the Holy Ghost. And John in Elizabeth's womb jumps for joy at the Salutation of Mary. Question two. What did Elizabeth pronounce under the influence of the Holy Ghost? Luke 1, verses 46 to 49. Mary said, My spirit. Question three. What did Mary pronounce under this influence? They said a lot. Luke 1, 64, Zacharias filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. Hmm. So, what does it take to be filled with the Holy Ghost? How do you stand before your God? Luke 1, 70, Holy Prophets. 72, Holy Covenant. 75, righteousness and holiness. 77, knowledge of salvation, remission of sins. So, in the Old Testament, which we just concluded, we had the holy prophets and we had the holy covenant. And they were supposed to be righteousness and holiness and associated with that. But Jesus came to give us knowledge of salvation and remission of sins. Have your sins been remitted by the Lord Jesus Christ? 
Question 4. Discuss the prophecy of Zacharias. He said a lot. Luke 180. John the Baptist became strong in spirit. Well, since he was brought by the Holy Spirit, you would expect that. Luke 2, 22 to 23, purification for the mother and every child is holy under the law. And that's where we still are until the death, burial, and resurrection. We are still under the law. And the law gives the order of cleansing for a mother after having given birth. And God said, everything that opened the matrix is mine and has to be redeemed. Question five. Discuss the words of Luke 2, 25, 26, 27, and 35 by Simeon. And question six. Discuss the words of Luke 2, 36 to 38 of Anna. Luke 2, 4, 40, Jesus grew in spirit, wisdom, and grace. So if Jesus grew in spirit, wisdom, and grace, why don't you? Two, repentance and remission. John preaches, Mark 1, 4, baptism for repentance and remission, Luke 3, 3. And then there's the fire of Luke 3, 9 and Matthew 3, 10, 11, and 12. Is that the same fire as Acts 2? John 1, 12 to 13, born of God. Have you been born of God? Jesus will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire, Matthew 3, 11 and 12, and Mark 1, 7 and 8, and Luke 3, 15 to 17. Do you really want the fire represented in these passages? Matthew 3, 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Notice the comma followed by the and. And with fire. Verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, comma, or semicolon, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Pentecostals often miss the comma and the and in verse 11 and then altogether ignore verse 12. Mark 1, 7, and preach, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. No fire there. Luke three sixteen. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he, shall, he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire unquenchable. Question 7. Discuss these passages 
on the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the fire. Question 8. Discuss the Holy Spirit at the baptism of Jesus. Matthew 3, 13 to 17, Luke 3, 21, 22, and John 1, 31 to 34. Matthew 4, 1, Jesus led of the Holy Spirit to the wilderness with uh, Mark 1, 12 to 13. And Luke 4, 1 and Matthew 4, Jesus returns in the power of the Holy Spirit. And with the word of God, he defeats the devil in the wilderness. The angels come and minister to him, and then he returns in the power of the Spirit. And we then come to John chapter 3 and verses 5 to 8, born of the Spirit. Have you been born of the Spirit? As Jesus talked with Nicodemus. John three sixteen to 21. Believe or be condemned. Believe and go to heaven or disbelieve and go to hell in the lake of fire. John three thirty one to 34. The spirit was not given by measure to Jesus Christ. He had it all. Do you know of anyone who claims to have it all, like Jesus? John three thirty six, Believe, have everlasting life, and avoid the wrath of God. John four thirteen and 14, Water within to the woman at the well. Are you familiar with that story? Jesus said, if you knew who asked for water, you'd ask him, and he would give you living water. John 4, 23 and 24. Worship in spirit because God is a spirit. Do you worship? I didn't say, did you go to church? I said, do you worship God in spirit? Luke 4, 14. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. A repeat there. Three, Jesus begins his ministry. Mark 1, 23, 24, and 26. Man with an unclean spirit cast out. That's along with Luke 4, 33 to 26. It's probably 23 to 36. Let me correct that. My typing skills are not the best. Jesus, the Holy One of God. So this unclean spirit in this man identifies Jesus as the Holy One of God. Jesus makes him be quiet and casts him out. So in verse 24, it's the Holy One of God. 26, the unclean spirit. And 27, the unclean spirits obey. Do you have any experience with unclean spirits? spirits and do you know that you have the authority to cast them out been there done that Matthew 8 16 devils and the spirits healed with Mark 1 32 to 34 and Luke 4 41 thou art the Christ of God again the demons identify who Jesus is so, if the demons know who Jesus is, do you know who Jesus is? Matthew 4.24, torments, devils, lunatics, all healed. Because Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. Mark 1.39, devils in the synagogue. Hmm. How many devils are there where you go to church? You don't think they're there? You might be surprised. 
Mark 2, 8, Jesus perceived in his spirit what was in their hearts. Hmm. Do you have the gift of perception? Question 9. Discuss the gift of perception. Luke 5, 17. The power of the Lord was present to heal. It's not always present. Because there's... It said of Jesus that he could do no mighty miracles in where he came from because of unbelief. John seven fourteen, sin no more. After he healed a person, he says, Sin no more, lest the worst thing come upon me. So if you've uh, repented of your sin and you're living for the Lord. What do you think might come upon you if you were to backslide? Matthew twelve eighteen. I will put my spirit upon him, quoting from Isaiah. Question 10. Discuss the contents of Matthew twelve eighteen. Mark three eleven. There are unclean spirits who confess that thou art the Son of God. Luke six eighteen. Again, the demons know who Jesus is. And that's why if you are saved and born again in the authority and name of Jesus Christ, you have power over demons. And don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And we're going to stop there for this one. And next will be part four, Sermon on the Mount. Continuing with our Holy Spirit in the Gospels, we're on the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, verse 3, for the poor in spirit, a spirit with a small s. Are you poor? If you are poor, then Christ can make you rich. Verse 6, hunger after righteousness and be filled, Luke 6, 21. How hungry are you for the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit therefrom? Verse 8, the pure in heart see God. One of these days, will you see God? One of these days, if the Lord tarries, you're going to die and they're going to put your body in the ground. The Bible says the spirit shall return to God who gave it. That leaves you, your soul. And where will you go? Verse 10, persecuted for righteousness. Are you prepared? Have you been persecuted? I'm really talking persecution. I'm not talking about being made fun of or simply insulted. The church history from the disciples to the date is filled with those who have given their all for the cause of Christ. Verse 20, righteousness exceed the Pharisees. The Pharisees were self-righteous hypocrites. And Jesus called them that several times. Does your righteousness exceed the righteousness of of the Pharisees who not only followed the law, but a lot of other Jewish traditions. Verse 22, in danger of hell fire. Where do you stand? Are you in danger of hell fire? by your attitude, belief, and disposition. Verse 48, be perfect as God is perfect. Now there's a standard for you to try to live up to. So 
in relationship to holiness doctrine, how perfect is perfect. Luke 6, 36. Be merciful as the Father. If you're saved, you have seen the mercy of the Father on yourself. Are you being merciful to others? Matthew 6, 9 to 13 is the Lord's Prayer. In verses 14 or 15, it says, Forgive or you will not be forgiven. Now, when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ to give account, is there something that's going to be standing in your way that you have not been forgiven because you have not forgiven others? That's what it says. Question 11. Discuss Matthew 6, 14, and 15 in association with 1 John 1, 9. Verse 17. Fast and anoint thy head. In other words, uh, don't go around having a bragamony. You don't have to be all puffed up like a blowfish. Verse 22 and 23, the light of thy eye is dark and evil. If you're, if you're not looking in the right place, if you're not looking in the book, if you're not looking up to heaven, then you're I will be evil and you will be in darkness. Matthew 6, 33, a familiar verse, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And before that verse, he lists all many of the things associated with this life here on earth. And so if you... Seek the righteousness of God in the kingdom of God, then he'll take care of the rest. Matthew, I mean, question 12, discuss Matthew 6, 33 in the context of the chapter, as I just reviewed for you. Judgment. Matthew 7, 6. Give not wholly to the dogs. Uh, in my experience in witnessing to others, I have had uh, those where I try to tell them some of the prophets of being a Christian uh, kind of laugh in my face. So don't give the holy things of God to unconverted dogs. Verse 17 and 18 with Luke 6, 43 to 45, talking about a fruit tree and the heart being good. You have a fruit tree, oranges, apples, whatever, then you expect as it grows and matures that it will give fruit. And so God expects you to have a good heart and do some good for the cause of Christ. 19. Somebody is cast into a fire. Is this Pentecostal fire? 5. It came to pass. Matthew 11, 3. The blind see, the lame walk, the dead are raised. Luke 7, 21. Healed and evil spirits are cast out. That's what Jesus sent to John in prison. Matthew eleven thirteen. All the prophets and the law till John. There's going to be a change of venue. Question 13. Discuss the context of Matthew eleven fourteen relative to John the Baptist and Elias. 
Matthew eleven sixteen to 19. John the Baptist, some call him a devil. The son of man, they call him a glutton. Luke seven thirty three and 34. What do they call you? Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29. Come unto me and I will give you rest. How rested is your soul in the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of the storms of life. Luke 7, 37 and 38, the woman anoints Jesus in verse 46. And uh, some of the people in the room chide over this sinner who's anointing Jesus. And he said, She's anointing me for my burial. Luke 8, 1 of 3, Mary Magdalene, evil spirits ministered to Jesus. This woman had seven evil spirits whom the Lord cast out, and then she followed Jesus and ministered to him and his physical needs. Matthew 12, 22, one possessed with a devil, with Mark 3, 22 to 26. Verse 40, cast out Beelzebub by the prince of devils. Luke eleven fourteen, cast out devils by Beelzebub. And Jesus says, if I do it by the spirit of God in eleven twenty, then the kingdom of God has come. And in Matthew twelve twenty six, if Satan is against Satan, his kingdom will fall. And if I cast them out, verse 27, by whom do your children cast them out? But if I, by the Spirit of God, then again, the kingdom of God is come. So, have you entered? Matthew 12, 31 to 32. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost with Mark three twenty eight to thirty and Luke twelve ten to twelve. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Attributing what the Holy Spirit does to the devil. I doubt seriously if any Christian has committed that sin. And if any unperson has ever committed that sin, I doubt they would ever get saved. Question 14. Discuss the context of these verses. Matthew 12, 31, 32. Mark 3, 28 to 30. And Luke 12, 10 to 12. Which I just went over. Matthew 12, 35 and 36. Good man heart has puts out good, and an evil man's heart puts out evil. What's in your heart? You pick up a tube of toothpaste, and you open the lid, and you squeeze the tube, and out comes jelly beans. <coughs> no. Out comes toothpaste. Why? Because that's what's in there. So what comes out of you when you get squeezed? That will tell you the content of your heart. Matthew twelve forty three, An unclean spirit. Verse 45, Seven spirits worse. Luke eleven twenty four, Unclean spirit dry places. 26, Seven other demons. Okay, that's this guy had a demon. The demon left, wandering around. When he came back and found that this guy that he had possessed had uh, cleaned up his act. His house was clean. He was clean. He was a good old boy. And then that demon went and found seven other demons worse than himself, and all eight of them moved in. 
And the latter state of that man was worse. Because in between, although he cleaned up his act because the Spirit had gone, Jesus and the Holy Spirit had not moved in. Parables. Luke 8, 14, the sower. And it speaks of no fruit to perfection. Is anything you do done to perfection? Verse 15, the good ground heart to fruit with patience. So if you're the good ground on which the word of God falls, then in time you will produce fruit for the cause of Christ. Question 15, discuss the parable of the sower in Luke 8 relative to the fruit and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 12, 30, harvest time. First bind the tares and burn them. Hmm. Matthew 13, 1 to 43, the good seed kingdom. And in that there are the tares of the wicked one. Verse 40, the tares are cast into the fire. Verse 42, the furnace of fire. And Matthew 13, 49 to 50, the wicked are cast into the furnace of fire. This is not the Holy Spirit. Question 16. Do you want this baptism of fire as described in Matthew 13, 42 to 50? Matthew 8, 28. Two possessed with devils. And then look at verse 34. And then we have Mark 5, 1 to 20, and Luke 8, 26 to 39, the same subject matter. Question 17. Discuss the power of demons and the power of Jesus over the demons in Matthew 8, 28 to 34, Mark 5, 1 to 20, and Luke 8, 26 to 39. <clears throat> Luke 8.55, Jesus is dealing with a <clears throat> girl who has been, been very ill and thought dead. He said her spirit came again. Matthew 9.32, a man possessed with the devil. Verse 33, the dumb speak. In 34, he cast out the devil by the prince of devils. There you go, attributing the work of the Holy Spirit to the devil again. So you need to watch what you're doing. And next we will discuss the power to the disciples. <clears throat>